Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Plus Three Futures and Commodities Show. We are recording Friday, October 14th. Uh, my name is Ben Maldonado. As always, I'm here with my partner, Barry Hedarachi. How you doing, Barry? Survived the whipsaw week? <laughs> yeah, we survived and thrived. <laughs> exactly. Doing okay, doing okay. It was, it was a crazy week, like it's been lately, right? Things are moving, and man, you got to grab profit when you can because <laughs> they take it away pretty quickly. Yeah. And the anomaly in this market is Bitcoin. Yeah, exactly. I was just going mean, to say that. This is the most, remember this at one point a year or so ago was the most volatile asset you could invest in. And we've been flat, dead, sideways since June. And even the volatility this week and, you know, recently, September, October, flat. Now, that being said, has our outlook changed? No. If we until we get above this full square, it's bearish, right? And we're the 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 weight of the evidence is pushing us towards the half square here. I think it's doing a fake bottoming. <laughs> yeah, and it could be lulling people to sleep too. Yeah, um, but you know we have a target box. That's where we're looking. <clears throat> Nothing's changed there, and you know this trend line continues to hold. You know, pushing up, push it up a little bit this week, but. Again, until we get above the full square here at, call it 24.5, there's nothing to be really excited about on the bullish side. That's right. Let's move on. Yeah, let's <laughs> move on. So today, in today's show, we're going to cover, Barry's going to cover S&P. He's going to cover bonds, gold, crude, the dollar, the euro, and copper. And when he throws it back to me, there's not many commodities we're going to hit today because they're they're sort of in a um, in a corrective process, but we're going to look at wheat, we're going to look at corn, we're going to look at crude, and we're going to look at sugar. So let me throw it over to you, and uh, let's dive into it. There's the devil right back in the box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy, it's a dance, all right. I mean, if you just showed up on Friday, you'd say, oh, it was a boring week. We were basically where we were a couple weeks ago. Boring couple weeks. Pretty much. And, uh, well, let's pick up where we left off. And if you guys are new, uh, you know, probably be a good idea to go back and check the last couple of two or three episodes just so you can see you know, how we thread the uh, charts together every week. And that'll help out. And also, if you like our work, please remember to, uh, you know, click the likes and maybe share and the alerts. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right, Ben? That's right. <laughs> So you know when they get posted. Sometimes yes. it's the middle of the night. Who know? You never know. Oh God, <laughs> this is true. Yeah. All right. So what are we looking at here? Last week we left with two numbers: thirty-six nineteen and thirty-eight twenty-five. And up mm -hmm. here was supposed to be resistance, and thirty-six nineteen was sort of the area we had to hold above. And then we have the half square. That we talked about, you know, 3717 area. This half square was the place sort of the balance would shift. Well, what happened was we got looks like, you know, as of Thursday, it looked like we got a classic false break, you know, really mm -hmm. went deep and turned around and flipped around and went right back up to the half square. And this morning it looked like a false break to the upside. <laughs> Cleared yeah. the upside a little bit. <clears throat> Came right back down to our, you know, the support area the box that we had drawn out and you can see we've been really stuck in there and we, we you know it, it's sort of mean reverting to the box what we really want to do is break out of it to one side or the other and and next week might just do that so let's take a look at well let's take a look at the weekly we'll come back weekly a couple of things are going on you know if this 72 was holding well last week we talked about this 35 71 72 level mm -hmm. where we stopped the week before you know, but we couldn't close above the 72. Then we, you know, this week we messed around, came back down. We're under 72. So if 72 is really working, this is not how it's supposed to look. Clearly, we're marching to a different tune. And being it, the, you know, the weekly charts, and, you know, 52. Hey, Barry, to clarify that, the reason you're saying it's not working is we're crisscrossing the 72, correct? Yeah, I mean, it, it still might be working, but it's not as snappy as, let's just say, here. You know, right. when we just came in and... Uh, 
and reversed. Took care of it and moved away mm-hmm. from the uh, right, moved away from the uh, the square. And even mm-hmm. up here, went up one week, reversed the next week, we got out of there. Yep. So normally, you know, if it gets start slipping and sliding and moving under, and you know, it's like here we're you know below thirty five seven. Uh, we we took out thirty five seventy one uh, this week. Of course, we recovered, but you know all this is kind of a not the kind of snappy performance we want out of a square if if it's working well. Right. So I was I looking at other squares. But <clears throat> make sure people understood that that you know aren't familiar with the squares. Yeah. Well, that's that's a good that's a good point. And mm-hmm. and uh, so if you take a look at the square fifty two, which is you know sort of the default square for weekly charts you can see we're really kind of flirting you know that's where i got that 75 35 71 mm-hmm. level here 71 72 and we're down a square and a half we're kind of flirting around you know around that line and nothing special right it's, right it's kind of slipping there so if we go back to the 90 our old reliable we're a little bit away from the 90 90 would be down into about 3370, let's say, mm-hmm. right? which is pretty close to the old highs. Nice spot. Mm-hmm. That, yeah. Mm-hmm. So let's keep in mind for the weekly, you guys, let's keep in mind, you know, make a note of this uh, 33, yeah, 3370, because that would be the square of 90, okay? And if we're going to slip, that would be the next support level. Mm-hmm. In the meantime, We'll go back. I mean, we got to also keep an eye on this square. And if, if so, the way I look at this, if 3370 goes at some point, then it'll rest at the second square, uh, square 52. That's about 3140, uh huh. Yeah, about 3140. So, mm-hmm. and I'm just saying, if it's going to get that close, it's probably going to go much lower. So, <laughs> it's going to yeah. go that far. So, we'll see. So far, it's not under the half square. We're kind of uh, messing around above it. So that's something. But mm-hmm. the trend is clearly down. There's no question. We're looking for corners. And so the story, just to kind of you know sum up where we've been, let me go back to the daily chart just for a second. So over here, we had a bunch of cycles expire. And... Normally, when that happens, we should get a decent move coming out of here in one way or the other. One way or the other, meaning the pattern being, you know, it doesn't have to be sharp, but somehow we're going to start moving higher mm-hmm. because we're looking for trend change at, the, at when all those cycle down cycles expire. Well, in this case, rarely, well, I shouldn't say rarely, but I would say uh, often, <laughs> opposite mm-hmm. of rarely, you would see some kind of a false break before it starts to move up. And yep. and we saw that at the highs up here, you know, before we did anything, you know, we had a false break and then we came, started to come down. And here we had, you know, we had this low came up, false break. Then it started to go make the final highs. So it's not, you know, you know it's not uncommon. And here's it's very common one. in the commodities. Very, very yeah, common. commodities, it's, yeah, it's everywhere. I mean, here's one, Right there, there's another one where mm-hmm. we had a low, came down, made the false break, and ran up. So it, it happens. <clears throat> and here's another one. You know, we had three lows in a row, just perfectly ran up, came back down, took it out, reverse, and, you know, that was that last big counter trend. Mm-hmm. So here, it, it's it would be, um, you know, that could happen. But for that to happen, we, re, you know, it would have been great if we could have closed up in this range you know like if we can flip this bar around that would have been a good <laughs> false break true sign where we uh you know we we we, we you know, sort of throttled out of there then and, and we can maintain that uh but in this case we came back down all right so it's still you know holding within this box that we drew out where i would leave it for next week since we only talk you know once a week i would say we really have to watch this low around um around this, um, around the October 3rd. Well, October 3rd low is the key to watch. And if we can more or less hang above that, I think uh, we should be okay, meaning things could firm up. And that low, I would say, well, is 35, 71, 75. Let's say 35, 71. 
being the low here. So if we can hold that, then expect this to somehow whip its way around and start moving higher. Of course, we have the flip side where we can't hold that. What happens then, Ben? <laughs> probably look, look out. Yeah, I think we're probably going to make this half square in time. And that comes in, you know, close to November 9th, 10th. Yeah, and there's some and, good and cycles right in there, too. It's a good cycle, and that's the next sort of the timing cycle that we have. Mm -hmm. And that lines up, you know, fairly well from a, a number of points. It might not be the exact date, but that's the area we're probably going to look at timing-wise if we sort of lose this low and, 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 and we clearly get stuck under this this box. How is that? Is that, uh, is that clear? I just wanted to make sure to explain that clearly, the balance between, you know, what can happen and where it can go. Yeah, no, it, it makes good sense. If, if we if we lose that low, then everybody yeah. that bought on that big up day is going to panic. Right. I mean, I could say it's this slow, but that's just, you know, then this cycle wouldn't be, you know, I would, this is really not working. You know, right. for this all to hold together, we really need to hold this. And then... <clears throat> ideally hold last week's low weekly low and, and and somehow move higher are you keeping your resistance at 3825 there up here yeah yeah that stays because we you know the first point here for next week is really to take out this you know 37 let's say 20 or so 37 20 25 this this half square <clears throat> mm -hmm. and you can see we bounced off of that this week and we made a you know we found support on that before and the over here you know it was act so it's an active line so i think that's going to be the key to see a shift you know a big shift mm -hmm. but for early early signs would be you know this zone here if we can really <laughs> clear this or not you can see the battle around 3600 today too yeah yeah and if that happens you know going back to our square 52 you can see how that low that we're talking about came in right at that 35, 71, 72 level. Mm -hmm. Half square is right there. So that's the area. That's the thing to watch. And, and next week, the next bar can't really hold that. Then we have uh, last week's low is right there. That's going to be resistance. Mm -hmm. So, we, you know, we're going to have some problems something, some, um, unless something snaps <laughs> fairly early in the week, right? Right. Uh, so that's sort of, uh, and we could do a three drives, right? That would work out. Yeah. That's another possibility. Uh, but none of, you know, nothing really looks, if we break down under this and can't really hold, then we're probably going to get down into this November, this square line, and probably 180 down. So that would bring us to about 33 and a half, which, which is okay. So that's the downside look. And we talked about the upside. If we can clear, you know, clear um, this box and clear the half square, then you know we could we could go higher, probably at least to the end of the month. So mm -hmm. we'll figure that out as it comes. But right now, what we have to resolve is as traders is really to figure out what this whole box is supposed to be doing. <laughs> right. You know, it, it's it's really almost um, you know couple three weeks we haven't really done much being this big holding pattern so and 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 you know what happens when we spend a lot of time going nowhere all of a sudden we get traction and it just takes off so you mm -hmm. gotta watch that mm -hmm. anything you want to add no that's it no, we're good all right let's take a look at bonds bonds, bonds are an interesting spot mm -hmm. well a familiar spot <laughs> mm -hmm. Trying to hold support. Yeah. So we're down 270 degrees from the high, uh, like we've been covering it. <laughs> and, you know, that's that's uh, three squares down. We're squaring out in time. So it's possible bonds turn around here, just, just like stocks. You know, everything's kind of hit the squares. This is the problem when we have all the charts tuned up perfectly. You know, everything hits and we have to wait it's basically the same story i think if we take out um let's say this week's high we can say it's going to go higher if we take out this week's low uh then it's probably headed i think it's headed lower anyway 
And I'll show you why in the uh, weekly chart. But we're just trying to see, you know, when it's going to break away. And and boy, you know, this 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 area here at you know 270 degrees, which is you know let's say at 124, is one of those levels that can break away. The last level before that was up here, right? Yeah. And before that, it was up here. So uh, the, Significant. the level clearly holds some weight. And let's take a look at the weekly bonds. You know what I did was I went back to the uh, 82 lows. Mm -hmm. And and I don't think we – maybe we talked about this a couple of years ago or when it, we started doing this. But, you know, the high that we had um, got squared out from that 82 low. Fantastic. That, yeah. yeah. It's a 40 so, year bull market. That's right. So we know the uh, charts are good, our lines are good, the geometry is good. So the re you know, what I wanted to cover on the daily was if we take out those lows, the next real support is down here around 114, which would be this. Um, there we go. It's 144 degrees up from that 82 low. Uh huh. All right, so that's 114. And you can see that area was just solid for, you know, a bunch of years, right? Yeah. And then It wouldn't we, be uh, surprising to test it. It would not be surprising to test that. Oh, we're going to test it. I'm just yep. wondering if we're going to break it and <laughs> go lower. Yeah. Right? We're definitely going to test that. Uh, matter of when, well, it's this is why the daily squares are important to watch. Because that's going to tell us where those breakpoints are. That makes sense, right? Absolutely. And bond, listen, bonds and the dollar are driving all the other markets. Yeah, yeah. So you got you get bonds right, you get the dollar right, you're going to get everything else right too. Right now. All right. Well, we're we got the bonds, we got the dollar. All right. So let's zoom in on bonds. If this all works the way we're planning. So this is a weekly. The weekly setup and you can see how that 144 the line i dropped on the weekly chart uh -huh. 144 up from the 82 low is right there you see how perfectly that squared out where's your 144 timing is that december late december it looks like right timing here yeah that's december 9th december. Is that yep. really like december 16th yep so there's some big cycles hitting there too well, if it hits here right about then, that would be just about Perfect. textbook. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Yep. Yes, it would. All right. So that's kind of where we're headed. You can see, I mean, we might have a pullback or two, but that's that's the, um, you know, there's... Destiny you know, there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's You can't really... Momentum's just too strong. And you can see why, you know, dropping the eights, you can see where this support comes in. Mm -hmm. on the weekly so you guys just, just remember like, that for next yeah week. just like the previous one on the way down yeah the yeah. one right above it so when you're looking at the um even though i'm using the square of 90 here you can see supports pretty much in the same spot yep. right it's just scaled a little different so this is the area to watch and i think we went through the numbers so we're good all right moving on to gold last week we well we We've been playing with the same numbers, you know, talked about 16, 1676 and 1646 being support. And I said, if it's, you know, if we're going to expect some kind of a rally, we really need to hold about 1676, which, uh, you know, struggled for a couple of days and just gave it up. Uh, but now it's 1646 that's holding. And this is, it's the same story with all those cycles that squared. I mean, you know, my guess is some are going to hold and some are not going to hold. Mm -hmm. And so we'll have to see if this, you know, 144 cycle is good or not. So for next week, unfortunately, we only have the same two numbers <laughs> to bore you guys, but it's uh, not much to do. So 1646 is support. If we slip under that, I think uh, there's plenty of room to go at this point. And if we're going to move higher, we really need to get, a, you know, hold 1646, obviously, and then, then, um, uh, Get above 1676. Looking at the weekly gold chart, we took out last week's lows. And, you know, we have the 1651 level right there. 
So none of this is bullish at this point. No. The only thing bullish is the low that came in on the cycle is still holding, you know, and we had a nice ABCD going in. And this could be just market making everybody crazy. It's possible. <clears throat> just like here, you know, we had this low come in two weeks up, came down, you know, almost to cover the entire leg up and then reverse and went on to make um, higher highs. I mean, gold is like a lot of the commodities that I reviewed. It's about are we going to make a higher low or not on this pullback? Because they're they've all had a that low around on the cycle date, had a thrust higher, and they're pulling back. And now, are we going to get a higher? Well, low? right now, yeah, everything is on that, especially because we ended on that on this ABCD, and and we yep. had these other cycles come in, and and the battle really is here, and mm -hmm. and. If we're un you know longer we are unable to close above this, I think the weaker gold's gonna get, and it looks okay. like that. And you know we were all bullish up here, and then we had this you know our first line of resistance was this nineteen nineteen. Remember that, Ben? Yeah. And, and we dipped around there for a month Held or so. It. Yeah. Really couldn't do it, but when we did this, you know we came back and tested this um, eighteen eighty one and failed. That was the first sort of the red line, you know yellow light, I guess the red light yeah flag and then of course came down to the next levels just just eventually at the 180 degrees from the lows and now we're kind of slopping around here pretty much like we did here yep back in 2020 so we'll see how it works out for now it's weak is what i have to say agreed all right let's take maybe a look one at more it. maybe one more flush there yeah I switched up gold and crude this week, but uh, okay. So crude, um, we'd got what we were looking for, which was a break in the opposite direction. You know, when the circle breaks, we kind of went into this last couple of weeks. So I'm not going to cover the circle and all of that. But basically the main thing we were watching was this pullback. See, you know, if we can get above this, you know, hold above 91, just to sort of get a scope on this. And we really couldn't. You can see we rallied right up into the square and and, and decided to um, pull back. So for next week, this 83 is the key level to watch. If we can hold above that, it's good, meaning this cycle is still alive. We talked about how, you know, when the cycles come in, it's, it's sort of like, you know, planting a seed. So we're watching the plant grow. So if it basically comes back and takes it out, that you know, that plant is dead. <laughs> yep, that's so exactly we, right. And so for now, we're watching to see how this pullback holds. And if it holds above 83, which is the level we've been watching, and it's a fairly solid level, you can see we had you know, a lot of activity around that before. If you can hold above that, then I think uh, taking this out, if it holds above that, there's a lot of good stuff that could happen. Well, good for if you're playing the long side. Yep. That can happen with crude. Uh, but if 83 goes, then all bets are off. And I think I'm not, I don't think it's going to go back to um, 50 or anything at this point. But then it gets a little messy. As soon as we get under 83, it gets messy between 70, 73 and 83. So it's better if it stays up here. All right. Looking at, let's take a look at the weekly crude. Not much to add. We're basically inside last week. And, and this could be a, just a sort of a healthy correction check back. We're holding above these other highs, it's okay. And and we did the 45 down, so that's still in place. So let, on a weekly basis, let it mess around. You know, last week's low is still intact. Uh, so I'll leave it at that. We'll catch up next week, watch it be a price action a little closer. And take a look at copper. Not much to add. We just, you know, we talked about that last week that he's probably going to consolidate above 330 and is doing that. Really not making any higher highs. Uh, in here, so it, it's it, it's sideways, very now, wave flourish. Yeah, and if we look at the weekly popper, you can see we're still so managing to somehow <laughs> fold above that ninety level, mm -hmm. and we're holding pretty much in line with the fork. The ninety level, let's say, let's say three thirty seven, right? So we're in there. Not much else to do. This is also kind of consolidating and it's in a triangle. So we'll just leave it alone for now. It's positive above above the 90 degree square. 
All right, let's move on to the dollar. Looks good. Okay. We squared out up here and we were looking for the counter trend. Here's the counter trend came along, held it exactly at the 72. And uh, the big question now is if we, can, if we can take this out or not. If we don't, I would say we're probably going to consolidate here and maybe, you know, get, you know, just establish some value up here. But if we take out the 72, which is right around, uh, let's say, 113.75, then we're probably going to, you know, we have a lot more to go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything you want to add to that? Just that the dollar, uh, you know, the other, the risk markets and the bond market, they're all keying off the dollar. So this is really, really important here. You know, if we don't get above that 13.75, it may just be sloppy. Yeah. In all markets, you know, we may not get trends going. Let's take a look at the um, weekly. Well, See, the week weekly chart is the more interesting one. Still in a bullish position, isn't it? Above the yeah, one. Yeah, I mean, the vertical is just insane. Right. And it just looks like 116 is really where we're going next. Mm -hmm. uh, since we seem to be, since we seem to be holding above 112, which is the uh, sort of the critical level. And you see how we just broke out and we're holding above it, right? This is what we talk about when we're talking about holding above something or below. We didn't break out, come back and under it like it's doing on the daily chart. On the daily. broke out and we're above it. So this is uh, very bullish and it's far away from the uh, upper trend line, uh, the lower trend line, uh, the channel line. So it, it's in fairly good shape. Not much to do there at this point. And let's take a look at the euro at last. Euro, again, I think it's probably going to consolidate in here uh, with the same warning. You know, if this low gets taken out, uh, we have a lot more to go. Yep. And that low came in pretty much in line with all the other cycles that came in, you know, dollar, gold, all the, they all came in at the same time. So if the low holds, it's possible we go up and test this block again, at least the half square. Or, or the uh, box that we have drawn up. And yeah, not much for now. It's, it's a little risky to be long, I think. But if we take this this low out, I think uh, there's, a, there's a decent short trade left in it. That's when the, the Dixie goes to 117, probably. Mm -hmm. And looking at the weekly, well, weekly, you know, this is a good example of <laughs> getting under a square, although this is only half a square, right? It's like 99.2, 9.92, let's say. And, you know, it's been a month. You really couldn't break above it. So that's just signaling a lot of weakness. So on a weekly basis, the next stop is really around here. 9.0. No, I'd say 8.89 maybe. Right. And that would finish off that square. I remember talking about this when we had... You know, we were looking at these lows saying, hey, they're going to get taken out. I remember talking about it when this bar came in remember mm -hmm. we laughed yep. about double bottom not working and yep. then we took out the square right came back counter trend and failed so this counter trend right on the right on that square of 90 which happens to be a support here and you know the square is just an overlay so we're not putting this to match anything it just happens to work uh, perfectly so if all that is true then this uh, 90 seems like 89, 90 seems like the reasonable target for the weekly. And in the meantime, you know, watch the daily level to see if there's a, you know, bigger counter trend coming up before giving it all up or not. Often it can consolidate here and then finish up the drop. That's something that can happen uh, like we did here and here. You know, we came down, consolidate for about a month and then final washout. And uh, no small deal there, that three months. So something like that coming down to the uh, 180. So that we're looking for that completion of this square. We'll see how that goes. Anything you want to add to that? Euro looks weak. Yeah. That's all. What else can you say, right, for that? Yeah, that's right. But this low, you know, these lows that I've been pointing at that came in earlier, along with everything else, uh, really important to watch those. You know, yeah. because if they hold, that mean you know, like this one. Well, here it was a mind bender. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so, 
let's see how the theory works out you know so i'm i'm saying it looks like it could be a false break and then we're going to rally but we'll see so if we i mean the quick test is if we take out the low from the low you know low from the uh third then i think we're probably down to here which should bring us into the second week of november so that, that, that so there's enough trading there agree but we have to respect this because of all that cycles that came in that's all I got, Ben. Great review. Great review. Thanks. Let me put it back to you. Cover the commodities. Well, Ben, that was an odd place for today's high to come in. Uh, yeah, pretty odd, huh? Yeah, I, I would have never figured it out. <laughs> the market likes geometry. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, as as Barry said, look, look, we had the you know this plunge down rallied back above the full square so the, the bulls did a good job here right they protected mm -hmm. this full square which is call it ten thousand seven hundred. uh by the way all the levels both from barry's segment and my segments and even the stuff we don't even cover on the show but but cover overall they're all in a google doc spreadsheet that we'll post the link to when we post the video so you can get the, all the levels here mm -hmm. so the the bulls protected here on on Thursday after the CPI rallied hard. I mean, we closed at the high and then look what happened today. Topped out on the half square, which is 11,280. Couldn't even make it really just under there, but we, and then we sold off hard and closed down again by this full square. So much like in Barry's review and all the markets about how, you know, the, the cycles all came in and you got to protect those lows. I mean, it's, it's no different here, right? Mm -hmm. we, we have to if if we get stuck below this full square we open up the half square down here right you know and that's call it ten thousand uh, and that's the reality this uh, bitcoin was leading all risk markets you know to the top and then once we got over the top and came down mm -hmm. it's gone to sleep and now nasdaq's leading i noticed you know all week that when NASDAQ was rallying, the S&P would then start rallying. When NASDAQ starts selling off, it's leading the S&P down. So uh, the battle is here at this lower limit. Um, if we lose that, I imagine we're going to take out, you know, all those cycle lows from October 3rd and and things are going to press lower. So, right. I mean, that's it's just a reality. The, the, the October 3rd low was here for NASDAQ, right? Mm-hmm. And today we closed below it. So we got a weekly close below that low. So if that's leading, you know, is the S&P going to be far behind? Um, Cycle-wise, a uh, couple things to show you. We did a high to high here in 36 days, which came off of one here where we went uh, low to low. So a little inverse there, but we did it. The other, the dates I'm watching now, 56 days takes us to November 2nd, which is right, you know, in that early November, you know, within that first week of November that you were saying here. Mm -hmm. and, and for 56, we did a high to low there. So if if we did a high to low here into that November date, there you are out here. Um, anything else to add here on, on NQs, Barry? No, we're good. I just think we really need to hold about that lower square. Kind of like in the S and P, it's huge. Yeah, uh, and it looks like maybe Sunday night, Monday, we'll test that and see. Mm -hmm. But we'll see. So on the commodity side, a lot of the charts this week were saying that either there's one more push down to sort of clean up the the lows and either take them out on a false break or give us higher lows that we can build off of. So what I'm going to do is show you a few charts where they're setting up for potentially higher lows. And that's something that we really want to keep on the radar because you get your low, you get your first thrust out, and then you get that pullback. And if that pullback gives you a higher low and reverses, that's the one you want to get on because then you're, you know, potentially catching that, that third wave and the, the big, big move higher. Mm -hmm. First one we start with, let's start with wheat. So if you've been listening along to the story, you know we were tracking it into this low. 
we called out this low as a corner and it's playing out. So this is the first thrust. And I think we completed the first thrust with this false break here uh, this past week. I think that was like on Tuesday. Uh, so we, we went up, we made a marginal new high and then reversed pretty hard. The key thing is we reversed below the full square here. Uh, if if we could have stayed on top of that, you could have said, okay, we got more to go. But now it looks like we're into this first correction. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of places we were talking about here is is obviously the most important right now on a short-term basis, which is 848, call it. If we can hold that half square, you know, maybe we don't come down and bounce straight off and go. Maybe we come down and sort of, you know, muck around sideways here for a little bit. As long as we stay above that, very, very bullish. If we don't hold that, the thing we want to see is we want to see a higher low compared to this low here. So whether it's, you know, on the on one of these eights, mm -hmm. or if we have to come all the way down to the full square, as long as we can get that higher low, it reverses this sort of series of lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, you know, and, and you'll sort of get the effect of, okay, we've gotten our corner. And now we can try and catch this next third wave up here. Um, so that this is how a lot of the commodity charts that I'm going to show you today look. We get this thrust and this pullback, and we're trying to isolate this pullback to see if we're going to get that higher low. What else uh, do you see here in this chart that you want to point out, Barry? Well, I'm pretty much <laughs> where you are. I think it's a correction, but we really need to watch the highs, this week's highs. To see, you know, if you reverse next week, you know, let's say Monday, for example, right? Mm -hmm. um, because I think the low looks good. It's just a matter of, like you say, you know, where this pullback is going to finish up. And so, I mean, you know, I'm watching this these every day. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and we're dropping down into four hour too, just to see if we can get some clues there as well. Right, right. But for now, yeah. Just, uh, just just, watching for a reversal, basically, is the simplest way to put it. Absolutely. Let's check out another one of the grains here. Now, you can see corn's a little stronger than mm -hmm. wheat. It's a mm -hmm. little further along, but the, the basic premise is the same. We tracked it into this low. We're getting, we got this first push up, three, four, five here, three days in a row. So this, call it, 700 699 area is pretty strong resistance mm -hmm. we got a little false break there so i'm thinking you know we're going to pull back the question is again where are we going to pull back to are we going to pull back to the full square here which is around 670 or are we going to have to come all the way back down to this half square you know whatever it is it's okay we're 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 noticing that we got a low we got a nice thrust out and now we're looking to see if a correction has started here which it looks like it has you know, are we going to get a sideways correction like this was, or are we going to actually get a pull, a deeper pullback that we can, you know, buy into these different support levels? Right. But corn looks bullish. Uh, it's it's again trying to isolate where is this next pullback going to go? That you know gives us something like you know an example is over here, right? You had the low, you had your first thrust, pull back and go. Here, we, here you, you got caught in resistance. You had a sideways move, pulled back to the half square, and then we go again. Mm -hmm. This is what we're trying to catch. See that a little fractal, almost like, like this move here. Um, what else are you seeing here in this chart you want to point out to the folks? Well, that's about it. I think you covered it pretty well. It's mainly just watching that lower square, see if we hold above that. Other than that, I'm just looking for any kind of reversal, which we didn't get this week. <laughs> no. But we're holding pretty well above last week. So, Yeah, it's been very strong. Corn has mm -hmm. been really, really strong. All right, next let's go to Barry covered crude, and he covered it very, very well. The thing I want to show you again is, is you know, sort of how how I look at it, how we as, you know, Barry and I look at things when we're trying to isolate and find this, you know, this third wave like this, right? This is what we're trying to catch. So we got the low. The low came in on really good uh, weekly and monthly support, you know, so that gave us confidence that, okay, this is a good low. 
Uh, we had a nice move out of the low, which found resistance right where you expect, which is the half square here, 93. Uh, and now we've started pulling back. So what we're looking at and what I'm really focusing on this coming week is, you know, can crude hold this 82, 83 area of the full square? If we do want to pull back, to me, it's a buy because hopefully you're catching this. Right? This kind of move. And that's what I think, uh, you know, Barry covered it very well, but I wanted to show again sort of what we're looking at here in terms of trying to catch this move on crude. Mm -hmm. And the numbers are, uh, you know, fit with your numbers. They're off by a little bit, but yep. it's pretty, we're pretty much in the same boat. On the bigger picture, where crude really gets going, you know, weekly and monthly resistance are both right around 89. Mm -hmm. Take that out, this thing flies. You know, and if you're looking at you're looking at the, the the squares here, you know, once we take out 80, 88, 89, 104 will be the full square here. Mm -hmm. So I think crude looks good. Just like wheat and corn, we're watching this pullback to see does it give us the opportunity, you know, to buy it with a good risk reward ratio and the potential of catching this kind of move. Mm -hmm. So that's crude. One more to go, and that's it. It's pretty uh, slim pickings this week. <laughs> but the market decides, not me. Yep. This is one we talked about last week. It's intriguing in that if you look at the chart, we've had over a year of a sideways correction in sugar. You know, Basically, it's been in a range from 1750 to 21 right up here here's your, here's the top of the range 2050 bottom of the range 1750 mm -hmm. and we've been in this tight range what we've seen recently that has gotten my attention is for the first time in a while right since this move up here in february we've actually seen higher low higher high Right, the highs here took out these three highs here, and here we had a higher low off of this false break low mm -hmm. in uh, in September. The thing I liked about this week's price action last week, I pointed out, you know, we had three days in a row of this thing closing at a high, right on the ties of the day, one, two, three, just real strong pushes up. And then this week, they tried to sell it off, went back above the full square. Couldn't break out, tried to sell it off two days in a row, Thursday and Friday, pushed up, closed on the high Thursday, closed near the highs on Friday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Somebody's buying this thing. And they wanted to make sure that it closed over this 1850 full square. And it did. Mm -hmm. Every day this week, it closed above that square. Last time, last time it did that was in July. Right. So something's changing and this needs to be on your radar because if we break out and we can actually break out of this, you know, this full square up here at 2050, look at the base you've built for mm -hmm. yeah, it's 15, huge. 16 months. I mean, the move can be massive out of here. Right. So while the trend line's holding us right now, on the top and the square is holding us on the bottom. You know, we're getting this compression this week uh, to me looks like we could get a nice breakout here in, in sugar. So sugar's on the radar. It's a, it's a pattern I love because of the, uh, you know, the big base that's been building up and, and the clues that we're getting now that, you know, it's, it's percolating and like ready to bust out of this base, uh, which means a big move coming. Yeah. Anything else to add here on sugar, Barry? No, I think we uh, patiently wait and we're watching the price action and it looks good. So, yeah, this is one that uh, when it goes, I think it's going to move. So mm -hmm. we'll see. Mm -hmm. I mean, just basically summon everything up. Um, the There's a lot of markets that are at that, that sort of pivotal point. You know, Barry mm -hmm. pointed it out in his his review is that we had some cycles come in. 
there was a reaction, but now we're coming back to test it. And if the tests hold, it means one thing, but if they don't, it means, you know, all hell breaks loose the other way. So uh, I know we, we always say this week's pivotal, but because of that, this week is really, really important. So I'm going to be watching the pullbacks in crude, in wheat, in corn, the ES, the NQs, um, sugar. We're going to see if we can get a breakout there. Uh, gold and silver, really important spots. Are they going to take out those lows that we thought, you know, put in a nice little swing low with some false breaks? and mm -hmm. Or are, are they going to make a higher low and, and turn higher? I mean, everything, if you look at most markets, they're at that kind of a spot. So cotton's another one that's at the same kind of spot. Copper's at the same kind of spot. Are we going to get a higher low or are we going to take out a low? So it, it's a um, it's going to be an interesting week and, and we're going to be watching closely. You know, one of the things, Barry, I wanted to have you briefly touch on and, and discuss, we're in a bear market. The ranges we saw you know, on Thursday were incredible, like five and a half percent, I think, high to low, right? From the low in the morning to the high at the end of the day. When you see this kind of volatility, what, what trading strategies do you employ or what, what do you look at? What do you try to do to protect yourself from the whipsaws and, and just getting chopped up with these huge moves? You mean uh, on short term? Yeah, on, on short term stuff, sure. Yeah, short term, I always move to higher time frames. Like normally, let's just say in the old days, <laughs> which mm -hmm. was before all this madness, you know, I would even uh, basically go down to the four minute and watch, let's say, a 30 minute. And of course, I keep an eye on the other things. But as volatility increases, I just shift to higher and higher time frames. But that helps you, you know, have a better handle on volatility. Kind of slows things down a little bit. Yeah, slows things down and, and not as much noise as you go up the time scale. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if it gets really bad, then I just look to the dailies. Other than that, this four hour is sort of the uh, in between standby, like you use most of the time. Uh, so, so, yeah. so most mostly you shift to higher time primes to deal with the, the added volatility. Yeah. Do you just change clarity, your sizing? Yeah. Pardon me? Do you change your sizing of your trades or your frequency of trading? Uh, well, it, setups is still set up. So if something's coming off of a corner, I would still take them. Same uh, same sizing and everything, but they might not be as often because you're waiting for clear setups, right? And um, you're waiting for setups from higher time frames as well, too. And that takes yeah, long. Yeah, well, exactly. Well, I'm waiting yeah. to look for support and... Um, resistance on on the higher time frames and you know as it comes out in the uh in the flow <laughs> sure sure and yeah, you know it, it's not always static it, it all depends you know if you're trading short term every situation is a little bit different so you might adjust your positions a little bit but the key thing is really not the entries but really when you take profits you know like this week we learned you know, like taking profits, uh, especially when you have huge gains, it's, it, it pays off. Yeah, there's no question about that. I well, mean, it's always it, about taking profits, right? We talked about that once. Getting yeah. in is uh, half the battle. So, And the key is you got to have good levels because if you're trying to trade without levels in this volatility, you're just going to get whipsawed. You're yeah, going yeah. to get chopped up. I mean, even with levels, it... it um, the levels, you know, it it only it's only one aspect, right? At least mm -hmm. what we try to do on a weekly basis to map out the, map out the week, and we try to map out even longer. You do monthlies, and you know, we you do the monthly show, and we look at the, sure. the bigger picture. So the more you can map out, it's it's better. But um, you know, it's a lot of things have to come together. Levels are definitely one, and I've been talking about that cycle that came on, you know, that we finished up in October, early October third. Right. Like knowing that, then you know where it should go up until it's violated. Then you know it's the other way. Right. So, and if it doesn't, you know how to you know how to act. You know right. what you so that's do. why I mentioned those things. So probably probably should mention why, but now we now everybody knows that they catch this part of it. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So it's really for that. You want to map out where the highs came in, how is it behaving post post turning point. 
And then, you know, where the next level is, like we talked about a number of charts we looked at how, you know, we said, well, if this level gets taken out, we should go and finish the square way down here or way up here. So those are, that's what I call mapping it out. So we know we need to trade in that direction. We're not going to be caught by the headlines or, you know, some kind of little bit of volatility here and there, fake, you know, to fake everybody out, get everybody on the wrong footing. Sure. So you got to have some kind of a plan and then you just work the plan. And, and the way to work the plan is to have, you know, the correct levels. So it gives you the early indications of where, things might be, you know, where things might not be going according to plan. <laughs> so yeah, the flags, right? Right. And I think that's the, that's the key thing. Everything we do, whether it's the levels or the cycles or, or the, the technicals, it's all about trying to get an edge in what you expect, where the probabilities of what's going to happen next, one thing has more higher probability than something mm -hmm. else. We know if yeah. this happens, there's a higher probability of X. If that happens, there's a higher probability of Y. And and you have to have that well, yeah. if, if you want to have an edge. And that edge has to work inside of the bigger template of the mapping. Yes. Of, you know, the bigger picture. Because you know, we got all kinds of time frames operating all at once. We got the monthlies, weeklies, dailies. We got four hour. We got 30 minutes. So sure. you kind of have to have a view of all the different let's say altitudes <laughs> right you know time frames and then then you basically know like for example we, we looked at the dollar okay dollars trading up above that level so we know we're not going to be trying to be selling that at every opportunity no we're looking no. to buy it <laughs> so, right right and, as long as it stays above x you're going to buy it if it goes yeah, below the x side. yeah then you're until it gets up into sales. a square right yep. at that point you yeah. pull back a little bit see if the you know, if it's going to break through or not. So, you know, it's like, it's like going through traffic lights in the city, you know, you, you green light, you go, red light, you stop, you wait, <laughs> check for traffic. Right. right. Like it's like that. No, I, I agree a hundred percent. And I like to talk about these sort of things. I started doing this with the, in the show because, you know, you see so many people get confused by the whipsaws or intimidated by it or like frustrated and, you know, if we can share some of the things that we've used over the years to help people, I, I think it'll make a huge difference because the volatility is kicking up. And remember, the VIX is only at 30, 31. Mm -hmm. in, in the great financial crisis, it was in the 70s. Mm -hmm. So if, if we are getting into a really volatile period, days like we saw on Thursday are going to happen. And you have to have a plan when, and not when the bullets are flying. You got to have a plan beforehand so that you know, if this happens, I'm going to do this. If that happens, I'm going to do that. Because if you're trying to, to, to manage it or trade it on the fly, you will get whipsawed. And that's, and that's, that's the danger, I think, in trying to trade these volatile markets without, without a plan and without some sort of uh, system, if you will. Mm -hmm. So anyway. Uh, anything else you want to add? Like, what are you watching this week? What are, Where's your focus going to be? Well, we're watching to see pretty much like last week because the October 3rd corner is still holding in most markets. So I'll, I'll be watching to see how that develops off of that corner mm -hmm. and or not. You know, if either way, uh, there's a, you know, good opportunity in either direction. So just trying to see which way we'll we'll swing it out. So. Exactly. Yeah. Well, great job on your review today. I think we did good coverage and we'll talk to everybody next week. All right. Thanks, Ben. Good job. Thanks. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.